What is up? My name is Matthew McCack and this is Teach the Teach on the Dice Tower where I teach you how to teach a board game and in this video I'll be covering Subterra. Now this is a how to teach video so I am assuming you will already know how to play this game and now you're looking to teach it to other players. There are plenty of ways to teach games. This is just a way that has worked for me and could possibly help you out if you have any uh, difficulties teaching games or this game in particular. I always start off with the three main things. So first, I go into the story behind the game. So this one is like about you are cavers who have fallen into the depths of the underground. So a different kind of cave, I guess. There are tons of things just trying to kill you, like the darkness itself or monsters or floods and stuff. This is a really weird underground. The objective behind the game. So you are cooperatively trying to escape this cave before you run out of time. And in which case, you also talk about the third thing, how the game actually ends, where you run out of time, out of time, boom. Or if you all die, or most of you die. I think even if there's at least one of you alive, you've still lost, badly. Now the first thing I do is when I am telling them like we need to escape this cave, I show them this piece and then I shuffle it into the bottom five or whatever it is. Um, and I just say like, okay, so now we know it's one of these like six last tiles in this like stack of tiles here. This is a much larger stack as you all know. But anyway, so I show them this tile, like this is the exit, this is what we're looking for. Um, so we have to get through this whole stack in time, but we also have to survive a bunch of things that are trying to kill us. Um, and then I shuffle it in. And then, you know, I just set out this piece here where we start, you know, we have our little miniature people, right? Just chilling on the thing. Um, and from there, I say, you know, we're going to have some actions. Uh, I go mostly into the basic actions of what you're going to be able to do on your turn. Um, and I, I say, you know, we're, we're going to be moving around, trying to reveal as many tiles as possible as fast as we can. But we might also not want to split the party all that much. But sometimes it happens um, and that's okay. So you, you might go a little bit into these uh, basic actions, in which case from there you have everybody go ahead and read out their special abilities and things, right? So by the way, this scout, I gotta say, they look like they're about to do some awesome, crazy, cool stuff. And I let them know that you might not totally understand exactly what your ability does yet, but, um, this way, everybody kind of knows what people do. And then as they're saying what their ability is, I kind of start to explain to them like, okay, there's certain things here. So for example, so this is uh, the scout, right? Pathfinder, passive. If you would place any tile, you may discard that tile and place the next tile from the stack instead. So I might say like, as we're exploring, you actually flip over the tiles, but for you as the scout, you get to kind of like see, do I really want that? Or maybe I want to change it. Maybe I want to get the different um, uh, thing. Uh, the other one is stealthy. You cannot be chosen as the closest victim for any horror and sharing a tile with a horror does not cause you to lose any health. So again, uh, this is where you want to explain like, okay, this is your health, right? And you have your little health tokens on here. If you ever lose all three of the, those health uh, or all of your health that's on the board, you are not unconscious, but it's okay. Other people could come heal you. Um, and then you just explain a little bit about this in terms of like the horror that might come out, right? And you say like that might happen a little bit later and you'll explain it as the game goes on. Um, but pretty much that's all I do to explain the game at first. And then I get right into, well, playing. So um, it might be that I, I decide to go first just to show everybody like, okay, this is, I, I'm gonna show you what I'm doing and this is how I'm doing it. You wanna explain specifically about the whole little like timer constraint and how you could like push yourself or whatever it's called. But um, yeah, so everything costs, you have two um, timers essentially allocated to you and you could use them up in whichever way you uh, see, you deem fit. Um, you don't really have to go into the hazard actions just yet until they come up. Uh, and when I say come up, I mean through the actual tiles themselves. Um, so as they're going through, like certain things might come up, like the horror tile, right? And that's when you actually talk about like how horror works and all that stuff. Um, and then uh, like with the cave collapsing tile and all this uh, nifty jazzy things. 
Um, but you also want to explain to them how like actually placing the tile works um, in terms of like it has to connect if there's an opening and all that sort of stuff um, as you're going along. And that's also why I would say like you should go first. Um, and it's really good if you have if you're playing with multiple people, um, if you have a couple of people who know the game, uh, I would have those people sit next to each other. Um, that way we can all go and then like have the last couple of people who haven't quite played this game before. They go last. That way they can kind of see like, oh, okay, this is how it works and everything like that. Um, and then uh, you start to explain the whole hazard cards and everything. And again, I don't explain any of these until they come out. Now, a lot of people uh, might not like that, but... I feel like it adds to the theme of the game where you're like collapsed um, into this cave that's underground and you don't know what's going on, right? Where it's like, dang, anything could happen at any moment and I don't even know what. Um, and that's like what these characters are going through anyway. So, you know, uh, sure, the first playthrough, it might be like, man, we did really poorly. Um, and honestly, you're probably going to do poorly anyway. This game is really hard. But yeah, so I, I, I just really explain this game as it goes along. So as the tiles slip over, I will say, you know, like, for example, this flood tile comes up. I will say, you know, there, this tile might flood, right? And in that case, and they have, you know, all these uh, player aids. Um, and you can let them know if, if it does flood and you're on that tile, you'll lose like health points or whatever, right? However many health points, I think it's just one you would lose. Yep, you just lose one health point. Um, and uh, that's only if that card comes out. So uh, players start to um, understand that, okay, most of these tiles, they don't actually set off until one of the hazard cards come out. Um, and then you also let them know that this is at the end of the deck, your flashlight, the whole thing represents your flashlight that might go out um and this is where things get not good okay and you don't have to necessarily explain exactly how this card works or or what this phase looks like until you're at that point but just let them know you don't want that to happen uh because that would be bad um and then it's sort of left up to chance now the two tiles that i think are probably the most difficult to sort of navigate are you know the collapse and sliding tiles and all that stuff you want to make sure that players understand the whole arrow situation uh so making sure they they understand like oh okay so this is going up but i can't go up this cliff here except if i build a rope right and then same thing with this whole like sliding down okay i can only go this way now i can't go back up towards my friends unless i build a rope Okay, um, so there's that. But just letting them know, it, it's an emphasis on, you know, which way the arrow is pointing, where it's like, okay, that's where you can go. If there's an X, that means you can't go that way unless there's a rope. For the most part, that's how I teach the game. Most of it is you just kind of going through the game and maneuvering the cave system. You might want, do not quarterback in this game, I would say. It would be very easy to quarterback in this game, uh, especially if you've played it and you know like, oh, don't do this thing. But you might want to warn people like you, you might want to stay together. Um, Sometimes things happen where we're, you know, separated or whatever. Uh, and mostly we want to get through these tiles as quickly as possible because time is of the essence. And I have to say, I have never won this game. I thought I did, but then I realized I played the rules wrong. That was my first time playing. Anyway, uh, that is it for this Teach the Teach. And uh, thank you so much for watching. Uh, please leave your comments below how you like to teach Subterra. I know that the new version is also coming on out. Uh, I don't know when, maybe it's already out. Anyway, thank you so much. And uh, if you please, if you have any sort of questions, uh, let me know down in the comments below and I'll try to get to all of them. I will catch you next time. Have a good one. Yeah.